Hi everybody, welcome back to Tunes Reviews. Today we're going to be doing a top 10 list. This particular topic at hand is something that I think is very helpful for all of you out there to kind of get to know what my taste is. If you're a newer subscriber, if you're someone that hasn't been around as much, um, if you're looking for a fragrance for yourself where maybe our taste aligns, then maybe you'll find something in here that you haven't tried yet or a gem or something like that that you know you can fall in love with in the next coming months. And I am super excited to share with you my top 10 fragrances that have been my signature scent at one point or another within the last 10 years. At number nine, we're gonna go with the fragrance that's probably, well it is, it's the newest in my collection. Um, and that's the reason why it's so close to the tail end of the list. Um, I love every one of these fragrances. Every one of these is exceptional to me. Um, they all tell a story, they all tell a part of my life, uh, a particular moment or moments or chunks of time in my life. Uh, part of my metamorphosis as a human being, as a man, as an artist. And this one is one that I actually kind of detested and rejected at first and didn't realize how in love I would become and how you know, smitten I'd become by this particular fragrance. But I've got to say, if this is something that, you know, is, is something that would allure you to a fragrance, compliments, okay? Which it's certainly not something that I dislike <laughs> but it's not the reason why i buy a fragrance but if compliments is your goal then this is probably it it's the magnum opus of uh acquiring compliments acquiring positive feedback and that is from the house of francis kirchen baccarat rouge 540 Baccarat Rouge 540, I've already gone through a 70 ml bottle, and as you can see, I've put quite a dent in this, and I've only owned this since October. I wear this so often. It's something that, uh, it's, it's not something that, you know, you need a, a veteran's nose to get along with. This is just something to me and the people in my world that everyone loves. I can't tell you how often I've had to write this thing down for people. Um, I can't tell you how often I get complimented on this. It is just freaking number one in my book as far as that goes. And this not even, it's not my favorite fragrance or anything like that. I just, I found myself being allured to just smelling pleasant to everybody. And that's why I've gone through so much of this and that's why it has kind of inadvertently become a staple and a signature worthy scent in my wardrobe um, because I, it's one of the fragrances that I wear the absolute most. Coming in at number 10 uh, for the last year, this thing has been doing wonders. Now number nine um, is probably a fragrance that I'm wearing most often currently, more than the rest of them. And that's the reason why it's coming in at number nine is because I had this for a number of years earlier on in my journey, probably two years or so. And then I really struggled with it because at the time I was obviously younger, going out more. Um, and I was definitely more wrapped up in the concept of like people needing to enjoy what I'm wearing. Whereas now I, I mostly need to enjoy what I'm wearing versus everybody else enjoying what I'm wearing. But that being said, this fragrance is probably currently the one I wear most. It's tied in my top five anyways. It's not gonna go any, anywhere anytime soon as far as like my top five favorite fragrances go of all time. Uh, depending on the day, it might be number one or number five. It just depends on what mood I'm in. But this is Frederick Moll's Musk Ravager. Musk Ravager is absolutely exquisite. It's incredible. It is a head-turning fragrance. For me, I, I just feel incredibly sexy when I wear this. This is probably the fragrance. Um, this one, and you'll see one other towards the uh, bottom of the list or top of the list, whichever way you want to look at it, uh, that really make me feel most seductive or mysterious or whatever in that headspace of, of just romance and, and uh, seduction. So, Musk Ravager, um, I don't necessarily think that the things that have been said on YouTube about it being like that ever so disgusting fucking term that's been used so many times, panty dropper, which I, could, I can't stand, I reject that as gross. 
Um, <laughs> but it, it's not necessarily something that I think is one of the most complimented in, in my world. Um, I think the people that know me think that this fragrance suits my personality. And that's why they like it so much. You know, my fiance, um, my mother, people like that that have known me a long time. They know that I like those heavier, more dense, you know, uh, challenging fragrances. And this is definitely no exception. This is one of my favorites of all time. And um, signature scent worthy to me. I put a nice little, I know you can't tell because of the label, but... There will be a 3.4 ounce bottle being picked up very, very soon because it's one of the few that I feel like I need a backup of. So with that being said, coming in at number nine is Musk Ravageur. Yeah, before anyone gives me shit, <laughs> all you snobs out there. Number eight, I've gone through three bottles of, I should say that this is the third. This is the third bottle. And... I'm basing a lot of this on frequency of use. So that's just the way it is. This fragrance is probably my favorite designer for the better chunk of three or four years. And I absolutely could not get enough of it. Of course, it's been overhyped and overblown and maybe I would say it's welcome to some of the more hipster type people in the community, but nevertheless, it is an incredible fragrance. It's incredibly alluring. It's a magical concoction of tobacco and cinnamon, and it's just very sweet and inviting and cozy. And that is One Millions Privé. One Millions Privé is something that I have worn an absolute ton of. Um, I absolutely hate the original One Million. This smells nothing like it, in my opinion. And this is the most refined, most wearable one out of their entire collection, um, as far as I'm concerned. And it's just incredibly cozy. The beautiful thing about this fragrance, too, is that it doesn't necessarily project and or create a huge sillage. So if you're worried going into like a 1 million flanker, if you haven't tried this yet, thinking that it's going to be as overpowering as the original, it is absolutely not. Cut that shit, that, that power right down in the middle in half. And that's basically what you get out of this. It's the, the quality is definitely more amplified and the uh, performance is pretty much cut in half, but that's okay. I absolutely love One Million Privé and that's why it comes in at number eight. I've used it quite a bit in the last few years. Number seven is an oldie, but a goldie, okay? This is one that uh, was my favorite for I think about three, two, th two three years. Um, I went through two Eau de Parfum versions of this and two Eau de Toilette versions of this. So a total of four bottles that I'd gone through and this is my final eau de toilette bottle that I've got here. I'm sorry, my final eau de parfum bottle that I've got here. And this is it. I, I don't know if I'm going to plan on buying another fragrance, um, replacing this or not. Um, I will tell you that Bulgari's black, I actually am enjoying more and you can find it for way cheaper. So we'll see. Um, but this is a fragrance that really kind of encompassed who I was for a few years. I mean, I, I loved all the reviews on this when it, they were coming out. Hyro loved this. Um, Katie, Puck, Katie Puckrick loved this. There were so many people that really enjoyed this fragrance that I really respected in the fragrance community when I first fell in love with this. And as an added bonus, um, Mark Robes08 had gifted me with a Lucky Scent gift card whatever it was almost 10 years ago now and this is the fragrance that I purchased with it so there's a lot of angles as to why this was one, one of my favorite fragrances and that is Midnight in Paris by Van Cleef and Arpels should have never been discontinued an absolute travesty in my mind don't understand why um this stuff it, it sold well uh it's a, the most gorgeous bottle on the face of the fragrance planet in my opinion and it's just a complete travesty that it was discontinued. But that being said, there's other stuff out there that smells kind of similar to it. So if you don't want to pay the hefty price tag of like 120 or 140 or upwards of 200 for this thing, just give Bulgari Black a check. It's actually probably a little bit more complex and definitely worth the money. So that being said, Midnight in Paris, lots of memories, signature scent worthy. I wore this a lot for a couple years when I was in my 19, 20, 21 realm. And uh, yeah, good memories with this one. Number six, we're going back to Francis Kirchen. Yes, he is one of my favorite perfumers. Um, I know that there's a lot of people out there that think that he's kind of basic, but I think you're wrong. And that's okay. We can agree to disagree. We can have a conversation about it. We don't have to jump down each other's throats. It's all right to have differing beliefs. 
Yeah. Go figure, right? So this is one of the fragrances, again, that I talked about when I reviewed this, that it is something that I've had plenty of people ask for me to write down. Um, I, I just love this. This is my favorite fragrance from the house of Francis Kirchen. Um, and it just really, really encompasses and embodies part of my personality. I'm a huge gourmand lover, if you couldn't tell. And I'm a huge oriental uh, lover. And I absolutely think that this is gorgeous. I think that it's smooth, refined, sexy, elegant. And you can't go wrong with this. I have so, so, so many memories that are wrapped around this one. Um, involving my college days, involving uh, kicking off some of my filmmaking. And it's just not going to go anywhere. This is Francis Kirchen's Grand Soir. Grand Soir is sexy. <sighs> sexy, sexy. I lied. There's actually three on this list that make me feel incredibly sexy because I overlooked this one somehow. <laughs> and this, this one is... Yeah, this one just does it. My gosh. Um... I think if there's any of you out there that are looking for something that's uh, vanillic, amber, tonka bean, um, a little woodsy, a little incensey, just very, very refined, creamy gourmand, you should look no further. That stuff is absolutely stunning. It's a killer. It's a lady killer. Um, it's an everybody killer. I, I don't care what you are, uh, gay, straight, bisexual, whatever. I've been complimented by everybody with this stuff, you know. Um, and, and, it, and it's just, it's all good stuff. I think that if you would enjoy that kind of category, you will do very well with wearing that fragrance out and about. Number five is the other one that makes me feel incredibly sexy. Um, I, I gotta tell you that this, it was a toss up between this and uh, Tonka Imperial. <clears throat> Tonka Imperial, I also consider it to be a signature scent of mine. I've gone through three bottles of it in the last 10 years. Um, it's something that I have to have in my collection. It's in my top 10 favorites of all time. And this one, I like a little bit more, like the tiniest amount more. I might wear it a little bit less just because I, I think Tonka Imperial is more something I can wear no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I am. Angelique Noir. Yes, Angelique Noir is a little different. Um, I, I mostly save this for like more dressy occasions. Um, but to be honest with you, I, I don't give a shit about that. I wear it as often as I can come up with an excuse to wear it, I wear it. This is just a little bit more complex to me. It's a little bit more daring to me. It's a little bit more fun to wear and kind of like try to pull off the whole metrosexual thing. And like, you know, it, it's kind of, it's fun to me to have people be a little combative of, well, you smell pretty or you smell kind of like a girl or a woman or whatever. And I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> Because I don't. I don't care. I absolutely think this is gorgeous. I think more men need to check out Angie Black, as Manny would call her. She is a beauty. She's a stunner. And she's absolutely signature scent worthy in my mind. I think that she is all class. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Give her a check if you haven't tried her out. Number four. Another one that just reminds me so heavily of uh, college and filmmaking and um, a couple of my first like bigger projects and, and some of my really important friendships to me. Um, this really reminds me of spending a lot of my time with uh, my best friend Benjamin, who I had let you guys know passed away in October. And this, this fragrance really, really, really reminds me of um, our friendship kicking off, a lot of time that he and I were spending together. Uh, this was one of like three that I was wearing the most of while we were doing all those things together So it's just interesting how scent can just bring you right back to those moments and it's so so important um, Yeah, nostalgia, right? So this is a uh, Naso Matos Baronda I've gone through one other bottle of this and I'm halfway through and I've only had this bottle since I think maybe uh, July um, this is one that I absolutely reached for a ton. I go through spurts where, especially now with Ben passing away, like I get a little sad sometimes when I smell it, but you know, even just now talking about it, I'm getting like a little, <laughs> but it, it's, it's something that I absolutely reach for a ton, a ton in uh, the fall. I mean, this may as well be the only fragrance on my shelf in the fall. And then I will start using this more. Um, when spring starts to come around and like the, the snow is just ever so slightly starting to melt and the weather's going back up to like 50s I think that this is really really something that shines in like the 50 degree weather There's a bit of a cool breeze or 
uh, the 60 degree weather. And it's just something that has so, so many important memories attached to it. And this stuff is never going to go anywhere. This is always going to be in my collection. It's one of maybe like 10 that I consider having a, a backup bottle or two of. So if you like whiskey, oak, spice, give this one a check. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. I think that most of you can probably guess what my top three are. Um, it's really of no su surprise, I don't think. And this one is from the house of Tom Ford. I've gone through countless bottles of this in all sincerity. I've gone through uh, 3.4 ounce and two 50 ml bottles. And then I'm on to this one and I have a backup bottle. Without further ado, this is Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. Um, this was my introductory to I think spending money on a fragrance that made me feel like it was challenging while I was wearing it because I was 19 when I started rocking Tom Ford. Um, I actually didn't like tobacco vanilla at first when I first tried it. I was more of a Bois Moroccan, uh, Black Orchid, Oud Wood uh, kind of man myself. Those were really the, the first three that actually got me really interested in Tom Ford and... Um, and Tuscan leather, and and this was a, a love that I had, kind of that had grown on me, and now I can't even can't even imagine going without this stuff. It is like a winter staple for me. I used to wear this in the summertime as well, but I wouldn't do that now. Um, I think that this fragrance is something that you can dress up or down. If you love sticky tobacco, if you love cinnamon, if you like vanilla, then look no further. This is like the most scrumptious most gourmand tobacco fragrance I have ever, ever encountered, and it still continues to blow me away. I absolutely love and am floored by this fragrance. Number two, I've gone through, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even tell you. At least, at least three or four bottles of this. Um, this is something that just, oh my gosh, I have worn for the better part of 10 years. It, it's something that I love. It's something everybody else loves. It's just part of who I am now. Um, I, I will tell you that in the last two years, I have definitely not worn this as much as previously. Um, there was about six months where this was the only thing that I wore when I wasn't doing YouTube reviewing and stuff like that. Uh, I think at the time, it was this, Carner Barcelona's El Born, Bond Number no. 9's New Harlem, and Tom Ford's Costa Azura were the only fragrances I brought with me to college for a year um, when I went to University at Buffalo. And this stuff just became my signature scent, and then it just carried on over for the years. <laughs> so this is Amouage Reflection Man, okay? I've had this bottle for about a year and a half now, I think, maybe a year. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, that's still a lot for that amount, of, that amount of time with, you know, how many bottles we acquire. But I used to be able to go through a bottle of that a year, no joke, um... You know, things like that and Zerjoff's Udin and uh, the list goes on. I, I used to be able to just rock that shit and go through it immediately because I overspray everything that I've got, by the way. You know, especially something like that that's a little bit more soft. All right, my number one choice here. Just, I can't even tell you how important this fragrance is. is this fragrance is to me. It's something that I truly feel as soon as I tried it, it was just a part of who I am. It is a personality trait. It's an extension of me. And this fragrance has probably the most important pivotal moments in my life where I had to decide to kind of recreate who I was and have a uh, jump in metamorphosis, an earlier stage of metamorphosis, um, and, and, and kind of instill some new and more important um, morals and values in, in who I am and create who I wanted to be really and start following that path of, of being an artist and all that kind of stuff and this just reminds me of so many wonderful times with my friends I was broke as shit had a really beautiful apartment I spent way too much on it and I thought I needed the best as soon as I you know moved out of my parents house and um it reminds me of only being able to afford getting a couple cups of coffee at Starbucks a week and hanging out with the buddies playing video games and just really struggling and in all different angles that you look at is struggling with who I wanted to be, struggling with money, struggling with everything. But this thing, when I put it on, made me feel like I was at home. Royal Oud by Creed. Yes. I could say the same thing um, about Millicene Imperial. You know, that's probably most definitely my second favorite Creed. And I went through countless bottles of that. That was one of the first niche fragrances I ever purchased. 
But I keep coming back to this. I cannot tell you how many bottles I've gone through of this, okay? Um, two four ounce flasks and several of the 1.7 ounce bottles. Of course, they don't make either of them now. So this is my last of the four ounce flask that I've got. And then we'll see how uh, reformulations are. <laughs> well, everybody, I hope that you enjoyed my top 10 list. I hope that you found something in here that may resonate with you. And I hope that maybe for some of you out there that are starting to get into collecting, you can find something that you will fall in love with as much as I have. I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves out there and doing well. And I hope that this year is wonderful for everybody out there. I know last year sucked, believe me, I know. And uh, I hope that this year really kicks off a positive vibe for everybody. All right, everyone, I'll see you soon. Bye.